information for you. And in the studio with me, and I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to pretend like I know this, right? Because we had a very frank and candid conversation before we went live. So I'm going to try my very best to introduce our Excellency Ambassador. Can I put on the princess? Taglia Latella. Good morning and welcome to our studio. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am so happy to be back in St. Kitts. It has been two years since we've been here. It's um, been unfortunate because of the pandemic. Um, we haven't stopped working. We continue to work from afar, but it's just really nice to be back on this beautiful island and be able to spend some time with the people here in St. Kitts. Indeed, indeed. I understand it's three days you're here for, and I had to get you in the studio when I got that email. I said, the ambassador is going to be here. I wanted to hear what you're here for, what you're up to, and at least share with the people so they can understand. Well, we're here to um, have in-person meetings. Um, we'll be talking to the Prime Minister. We've obviously talked to the Foreign Minister, the Minister of Health, and a very interesting Minister Hamilton who has an, an portfolio that is very expansive, which includes Social Security, national insurance. Um, one of our issues is gender issues. Mm -hmm. um, and also he does religious um, affairs. So it was a very interesting conversation. Some of the things we're interested in are things like human rights mm -hmm. and development of people. Mm -hmm. um, and those are things that all of the ministers have been very interested in talking about and the programs we have. Mm -hmm. um, it's very exciting because we have just completed one of our key programs, which is Women in P Politics Leadership Institute. Uh -huh. This okay. is a program that was designed by the embassy. And what it does is it um, people apply, women apply, and we select a group from across the seven islands to which I'm accredited, which is Barbados and the, the six Eastern Caribbean countries. Mm -hmm. And we have a virtual program. Unfortunately, I'd love to bring them all together. But these are women who think they might want to be politicians or get into politics, either working for a politician or actually becoming one. Right. And the program goes, um, we have a moderator who brings in guest speakers, women who are polit politicians here within the Caribbean, mm -hmm. as well as people in the United States who have been politicians. And they have frank discussions about how they, de start, how they began their careers mm -hmm. and sort of the positives and negatives of their careers. You okay. know, Obviously, every job there's good things about it and not so good things about it. So it's a very eye-opening experience, and some of the women in the program, I'm sure, will be inspired to go forward. Right. Some of them who thought they wanted to be a politician may now decide they just want to yes, work for a politician. Yes. Um, so you have it, it's, it's a good way to get you started. But the idea is, is that right now, if you look across the, the whole world, the whole the globe, you mm -hmm. will find that there are very few women leaders. There are more and more coming into power. Um, we actually have one here in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. Prime Minister Motley mm -hmm. in Barbados. But there needs to be more women moving up into politics and representing the population. I have always believed that any organization needs a diverse background. And whether it's race, whether it's gender, whatever, mm -hmm. it works much better when you have people of varying backgrounds and um, culture, yeah, it, so. it brings a better balance, if it's, I can put it's that It's better way. balance, and yeah, I think, yeah. you know, sometimes I think that when you have a group of people who are homogeneous in, in their thought, there's no opportunity for creativity mm -hmm. and thinking outside the box mm -hmm. or getting new ideas. Mm -hmm. So this program, we're trying to encourage women to get into politics and to represent the female population. Before you go too far, how, how can women right now, listening to this program, interested, do so, get involved? Um, the women who have graduated from the program? No, who are the ones, um, Right now we're working on the next cohort of the program. Mm -hmm. We haven't set the date for, start, for its starting. Um, and that's where you come in. Okay. Because when, I decide, when we set the dates, I want you to go on the radio and, or TV and tell people when it is, how to apply, and think seriously about whether you want to be a politician. What are some of the things they can take into consideration now while you prepare? Um, in terms of, you know, background, do they have to be, be in um, a certain job per se, or is it from any class? Any class, anybody who's interested. Okay. Um, we probably look at people who are over 18 who've finished secondary school mm -hmm. who are starting to look at what their career aspirations might be. Mm -hmm. um, 
they may be in college studying something about international relations or public affairs or um, civil society kinds right. of things. Um, and that might inspire them. But no, we, we look for a broad spectrum of women from okay. across the board. Okay. Um, some of them may already be, matter of fact, we have a few that have already be are working in government mm -hmm. and they're working for politicians and they think maybe they want to be one. Mm -hmm. True. I should have asked what's the criteria. But anyways, we'll move along. Mm -hmm. Next on your agenda. So you've, you've touched base on that. What else you have done since you've been here? What else have I done? You know, I think um, we've met with the Minister of Health. I think, you know, that was very important to us. We have collaborated. Um, we actually, um, the United States Southern Command, through their humanitarian assistance program, donated to field hospitals, their mobile field hospitals. Um, we had a team who came here for a week. They taught people how to set the, t I w I am, these, these are not just tents. They are air conditioned, they have electricity, mm. they have running water. So these are things, you, and they're self-contained. So okay. you can pick it up and move it anywhere. So in case of a natural disaster, you can set it up close to that. You can use it either to treat people who have been injured or you can use it to treat people who have lost their homes and right. need shelter. Right. So they're very versatile and they have 40 beds so they can accommodate up to 40 people and probably a few more depending on how you arrange the equipment. Mm -hmm. But we bought one, we donated one to for St. Kitts and one for Nevis. But for example, she and I did a virtual handover. I was in Barbados and we handed over the field hospital to St. Kitts. So she and I had a lot to talk about and the things that we've been doing. We also built emergency management centers here along with warehouses to store things mm -hmm. in case of natural disasters. So we talked about COVID. We talked about the, um, we just brought in another 18,000 doses of Pfizer oh, wow. um, for the country earlier this week. I was not here to greet the plane, but I was very happy that the vaccines arrived. Right. Um, so we had a lot to talk about. And she, as a very young minister, she was, I guess there's one minister younger than she. <laughs> um, <coughs> but we talked about being a young minister and about being a woman in politics. Right. Um, I think I signed her up to be one of our guest speakers in one of oh, our next programs. Nice, nice, nice. Which is very appropriate, by the way. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. I think that, you know, and to be perfectly honest, um, some of us who are a little bit older probably don't resonate with young people, and someone like her, who's truly very vivacious and outgoing, will be a great speaker mm -hmm. to talk about how she started and how she got into pol politics. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. So you have what, one more day here, two more days? Today and Today morning we leave. Oh, wow. That's really quick, man. It is a quick trip. But yes. It gives us an opportunity, like I say, to re-engage with people one-on-one -on -one or person-to-person. -person. Um, it gets us to talk about the many issues that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, for your listeners, um, we have today, is, unfortunately today is the last day, but this is Black History Month for the United States, and we have a program that we're doing right now for Black History Month, which is for secondary school students. And they do a five minute video and they talk about equity, justice, and leadership. Okay. Um, and you submit your, you go online. First of all, you can go to bb.usembassy.gov. Mm -hmm. right. And you submit your video, you can do it on your cell phone. You can do it any. You, know, you probably can do it off a laptop, or, and you submit your video. Um, we have a team back in Barbados who will assess all of these. The winners will get prizes as well as their schools mm -hmm. will get equipment. So it's it's exciting, and it gives young people the opportunity again to think about what Black History Month is, even if you don't celebrate it here in the Caribbean. Right, right. But it's obviously something that's important to yeah. us. And, yeah. and the awareness part of it, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it gives people time to think about um, the issue. As you mentioned the school aspect of it, I know that you have a number of programs in the Caribbean for education. Do you mind highlighting one or two that happened this year or will happen this year? Well, we, have, we really do have a lot of good programs for education. One of the programs that we're really proud of and that we're hoping to bring to the Caribbean is our Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. Um, I and the Taiwanese Embassy here has a program that they've been running for women empowerment, and we're going to collaborate with them and build upon what they're doing, um, again, to further women entrepreneurs. Um, the other thing we have is something called the Young Embassy. The Young Leadership, da, da. it's called Wailai. Okay. Um, 
Anyway, Go it's a, it, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to send you all this so you can advertise no it on problem, your, on no your problem, program. No I, just want, I just want the people who are in tune now to get a sense of what's happening, why you're here, what you're doing, and at least they can know what's going on. Yeah, well, the wildlife program, which is young leadership, hmm. I'll think of it. Yeah. But anyway, I'm sorry. That's I apologize okay. for That's that. Okay. But it's a program that we sponsor, and we pick individuals across the Caribbean. It's a, it's actually an international program, and there will be people who are aspiring to go into some sort of business. Mm -hmm. They go to the United States. They spend five weeks. They start off in Washington, okay. and then they go to one or two other cities within the United States, and they get matched up with other business people mm -hmm. to learn about setting up a business, how the business runs. And the good thing about it is, is you not only learn about how to do it, but you network and you make some incredible contacts. Yes. And I've actually seen where some of the people from the United States have come visited the young people who've done this program. So it's a good program for young people. And again, we advertise when we're ready to open it up. People can apply, and um, it is done. I've seen there's usually like 30 people in the program, and they come from all around the world. Wow. wow. I mean, the only criteria is, is that in most cases we, ho we hope you speak English because most of the work is done in English. Right, right. Um, we also have, which is really important, and this is something, again, you can help me with, but we have a program where we have Education USA Advisors. Okay. There is one here in St. Kitts. There is one in... Nevis. They're both at the public libraries. Um, the one here is Miss Parrish, and the one in Nevis is Miss Clark, but they're both there. They have a computer. It has, f on the computer, is 4,500 universities, colleges, and community colleges across mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. The program is designed so if you say, I want to be in communications, if I want to be uh. in international relations, if I want to be a marine biologist, you put that in and a bunch of schools pop up that right. have programs in those areas. Right. Um, then you can say, well, I don't necessarily want to go north because it's a little cold. Right. I might want to go, you know, hang towards the southern part of the United States. Um, and you can hone in on a, re uh, you know, big city, little city, particular state. And then once you figure out where you might want to go or several schools you'd like to apply to, there's also information on how you apply for scholarships or get grants to go to those schools. Right. And it's a whole package pulled together to inspire people to come to the United States and study. Indeed. We also have people who are once or twice a year come and they do sports recruiting. They look for people who do track and field, soccer, football. Mm -hmm. We call it soccer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, basketball sports that we have in universities and, and I know there are a number of people from within the Korean who've gotten athletic scholarships to go to the United States. I know people would prefer that the United States offer just scholarships in the, but because our universities are funded either through states or our private institutions, the United States government is not involved in uh, the, the schools themselves. Right, right, so right. we have to find a way to you know bridge that gap get them together but I really need to advertise the program because it's a wonderful program it's available it's free all you have to do is walk into one of the two public libraries and ask for Miss Paris or Miss Clark and mm -hmm. they will be more than happy to help you interesting we just have wow one more minute to go I cannot believe that I thought we had more time uh, in closing do, what would you like to share in closing you know I would like the people to know that even that no matter where we are, whether we're here on island or whether we're back in Barbados, the Caribbean is very important to the United States. We truly look at the Caribbean as being partners to the United States and that we both, or all of us, are democracies. We believe in democratic values, rule of law, good governance, and we really want to work together to build on those relationships. So. Whatever it is we're doing, we're looking towards how do we better partnership with each other to make it a better place for all of us, both in the United States and here. Mm -hmm. I have to remind you that there's a large number of people from St. Kitts and Nevis who live in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, we share a lot of common cultural and educational and family ties between the two. So it's important that we build that bond between our countries. And keep it alive. Yes. Yes, indeed, indeed. I want to thank you for passing through this morning and, and accepting our invitation to be here and, and share with our audience and let them know that, you know, reassure us, if I can put it that way, that, you know, 
the connection is still there. It's still strong. And things are happening, indeed. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your, well, couple of hours, if I can put it that way. No, it's more than a couple. I'm just teasing Almost you. Almost whole day. I know, I know. I'm just teasing you. Remember all off your conversation? But anyways, we're not getting into that right now. Ambassador, thank you for being here. Appreciate thank you. Thank you for having me. It's Appreciate been wonderful. It. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Enjoy the rest of your day, too. Thank you. And to our listeners and viewers, thanks for being a part of our program. And don't touch it now. We have more for you coming up. Like I told you earlier, we have more information to share with you. We'll be back right after these messages. Hello, St. Kitts and Nevis! The bundle that packs the most just packed even more! Get a Digicel Prime Plus bundle today and enjoy one extra gigabyte every day for YouTube and one gigabyte for TikTok on top of the already amazing dedicated data for your 